Hi guys and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about how to create precise geometry from images in Autodesk Fusion. And don't worry, I will not even talk about canvases and manually tracing a picture in a sketch. As an example, I chose to create a tightly fitting case for this handle of a deburring tool. I wanted to create CAD geometry from a single photo as precisely as possible with as little fine tuning as possible. And ultimately everything worked out quite well as you can see here. First I want to quickly talk about how we want to take a suitable picture and what we must consider when using this picture. Let's say we want to capture a cross section of this green shape. We will need some reference to know the size of the shape in the picture. The best that we can usually do at this point is to place the shape onto a grid as shown here. In fact, I have prepared grids for you to download for free, link in the description. I've used the 1cm grid on A4 paper in this video. If you must use imperial units, I have also provided you with a half inch grid on letter format. Now let's get back to our sketch. Say we just take a picture like this. It is quite clear that the shape will appear considerably larger than it actually is. This apparent size is marked in purple here. Now what can we do to improve this distortion? First we can move our camera or smartphone away from the shape. If we now take a picture, we still will overestimate the size of the object, but the error will be smaller. This of course only works to a point, as camera resolution will limit the distance we can take a usable picture. So now we can further improve the estimation. If we were to move the reference grid up towards the camera a bit, we could further decrease the error. And if we think about it, we can easily do that by just downscaling the resulting image. On the right side, there is still some error, as the largest extent of the shape is still above the reference plane. However, if we were to move the reference plane even further up, that is, would we scale the image further down to precisely match the right part, we would underestimate the size on the left and the resulting shape would not fit into our sketch. So what we must do to obtain the best possible shape is to scale down the image to the smallest distance from the base plane where an outer contour is located. When we think about the scale factor, we can come up with the following formula. The scaling factor is the difference between the total distance of the camera from the base plane and the distance of the critical point from the base plane divided by the total distance again. Don't worry if you have not perfectly followed, it will definitely become clear when we actually do the steps. For my example, I placed the handle on a small piece of putty so that the critical points are basically all at the same distance above the base plane. This distance was around 15 mm. I then moved the phone up to a distance of 75 cm and ended up taking this picture. Now we want to do some pre-processing of the picture. It is virtually impossible to take a picture perfectly perpendicular to the base plane. So we first want to remove any obvious distortions. You can use a vast variety of tools for this step on different devices like Office Lens, Adobe Scan, GIMP or Photoshop. But here I show a free web-based solution. I went to scanwriter.com and just uploaded my picture. Then I chose crop before adjusting the corner points of the rectangle to match points of the grid just outside of the object with a one cell margin. I did not care for a higher resolution, so after processing I just took a screenshot of the relevant part. Here again I took care to select grid points as precisely as possible before saving the picture. At this point we should have a look at the reference size of the picture. My picture is 4 by 14 cm, which I will use later. Next, we want to get rid of the grid and background. For that, I went to remove.bg and just uploaded the cropped picture. And just like that, I could download the perfectly cropped image. Next, we will move to Inkscape, which is a quite powerful but free and open source vector graphics editor. Link in the description. If you have never used it, it may seem daunting at first, but we will just use a handful of features here. First, 
I just drag the image file we have just exported into a new document. I then make sure that the size of the image is correct. I ensure that the units are set to millimeters and uncheck the lock, which would fix the aspect ratio of the image. Next, I enter the size, including the scaling I have described in the beginning. The width is 40 millimeters, which is the width of the grid columns in the image, times the camera distance minus the offset distance which is 750 mm minus 15 mm, divided by the camera distance of 750 mm. Similarly, the height is 140 mm, again times 750 minus 15 mm by 750 mm. Now that the size is correct, I want to just roughly rotate the image to vertically. I left click on the image again and drag the handle at the corner. This does not have to be perfect now, we will fine-tune the alignment later. Next, I select Trace Bitmap from the context menu. As the image is already cropped, we want to do a brightness cutoff just below 1. You can play with the options a bit, but the only relevant one should be the optimized parameter, which will influence the number of control points we will get. I have found that the value of around 1 works well. After confirming, I switch to the Fill and Stroke tab. I don't want the stroke and set the fill color to cyan. To still show the original image, I like to set the Blend mode to Multiply. Now we can have a look at how well the geometry was captured by the shape. I don't like this narrow groove and I will fix it later, but other than that, I am quite satisfied with the result. I now want to precisely align the shape to make use of the symmetry. So I select the pen tool and draw two horizontal lines across the shape. I take care to let the tool snap to the shape by clicking while the handle to path message is showing and I hold the control key to make the line perfectly horizontal. I finish the line by hitting enter. I reactivate the stroke to show this line. Then I create the second line the same way. Now I can connect the midpoints without holding the control key. Here I want the handle to line midpoint message to show when I click. Now this third line should be a very precise center line of the shape. I don't need the other two lines anymore, so I choose the selector tool and select each line before removing it by hitting the delete key. Next I want to extend the line over the whole shape. I select the center line and make sure the lock is closed to keep the aspect ratio. Then I drag the arrow in the corner to extend the line. It is important to choose the corner handle instead of the vertical here. Don't let yourself be confused by the jumpy snapping and preview here. It is just important that the line extends over the whole shape while keeping the aspect ratio. Next I select everything and make it a group. I create the vertical guideline by just dragging it in from the left ruler. I zoom in and make sure the guideline intersects the lower end point of the center line. Next, I select the group and left click at the second time to rotate, but before actually dragging it, I move the cross indicating the rotation center to the lower end point. Now I can rotate the group and the upper endpoint will easily snap to the guideline, making the center line perfectly vertical. Next I ungroup everything and I get rid of the guideline. I first select the center line and then, while holding the shift key, select the shape. Then from the path menu I choose divide to split the shape. Now I can assign a different color to the right half. I want to check the symmetry, so I flip the right half and move it over. And make sure the midpoint snaps to the left part's midpoint. We can now verify that the symmetry was captured quite well, except for this notch again. I don't want to go into spline editing too much here, but I want to show just a few fixes. I select the node tool. Now I can click individual spine nodes and use the delete key to delete them. I could drag the shape directly, but it is better to drag the handles to edit the shape. Of course you can also drag the nodes themselves, 
Here it is best to hold the shift key to avoid any snapping. Finally, it is a good idea to make the shape as smooth as possible. This means avoiding handles that are very close to the nodes and not having corner nodes, which are indicated by diamond shapes. I select the corner node and choose Make Selected Nodes Smooth from the toolbar. Now I'm satisfied with my shape, so I delete the second half. Finally, I again make sure that there is no stroke chosen for this shape and remember the overall size of this shape. I will need this value in a minute. Finally, of course, I save the SVG file. While Fusion is launching, feel free to like and subscribe and join my free community to ask your questions. Link in the description. I also enjoy reading feedback or ideas for new videos in the comments. Now let's use this shape in our Fusion CAD model. From the Import menu, I choose the SVG option and select the file I've just created in Inkscape. Then I select the top plane to place the imported sketch on it. I could also scale and move it, but we cannot do this with any precision here, so I just confirm and finish the sketch. To move the geometry precisely, we have to use a little workaround. I go to the Surface tab and create the surface patch from the imported shape. Then I go back to the Solid tab and select Move. After selecting the surface body, I make sure that point to point is selected and then select to move the lower center point to the origin. Now the shape is precisely positioned and I hide the sketch. Next we want to scale the shape to its original size. I measure the total height of the shape, which is the length of its center line. I click the value to copy it to my clipboard. Then I select Modify Scale. I select the body before selecting the origin as center point. Now for the scale factor, I first enter the height value I remembered from Inkscape before typing a slash and pasting the value from my clipboard. This way, after scaling, the shape size will be the exact size it was in Inkscape before. Let's verify this by measuring the center line now before moving on. Now that the size is correct, we can create the sketch we will actually use for our design. First, let's project the entire edge of the patch into our sketch. Typically, we want to have faces which are offset from the initial geometry. I found that the most robust way to do this is to do the offsetting already in the sketch. Here I deleted the center line, but I actually could have kept it and it would have made my life a tiny bit easier in a minute. Then I offset the outline by 0.3 mm, which is a reasonable clearance value. I repeat the same with an offset of 1.5 mm to give me the outer shape of my test part. So I will have a wall thickness of 1.2 mm. Next I add a vertical center line, which I then constrain to intersect the origin. And this is where offsetting everything would have saved me some effort because now we can see that the shapes are not actually highlighted as closed profiles. So somewhere the curves don't sufficiently coincide with or intersect the axis. I zoom in on the top area and find that there should be sufficient overlap. In the bottom area, however, there is a tiny gap. I add a line connecting the end of the offset curve to the axis before making this line horizontal. Then I do the same for the other offset curve. Now we have a proper sketch and can remove the auxiliary patch. I first create an extrusion from the outer profile. Next I create the revolute from the inner profile and remove it from the extruded body. What is left to do is to mirror the body. What I forgot to show in the end is that using a smooth spline also enables you to do chamfers and fillets at least to some extent. The smoother the spline, that is, the farther away the control points are from the nodes in Inkscape, the larger can be the chamfers and fillets. I quickly printed the test part and I promise that what you can see here is my very first try. I just painted the top for better contrast. As far as I'm concerned, it really perfectly approximates the outer contour of my deburring handle. You might use such a sketch for a cutout in your favorite storage systems. Just don't forget to add some additional cutout for grabbing the tool.
By the way, let me know about your favorite storage system. I hope you found this video helpful or interesting. Feel free to like, subscribe, share or join. Links in the description. Have a great time designing and prototyping.